Today is the 1st of September and we got a swarm in the apiary. Hit the music. So what I don't know is whether this is one of the odd peculiarities you get when you're caging queens. Uh, because some uh, I've found two queens already that had uh, superseded in the colonies that had cages where I've caged the queens. So, but the interesting thing was in both cases, it didn't happen after because the brood is so far advanced, it would have only... Um, there would have been already been a superseded queen within the colony. And I know how often people go on about um, there very often being more than one queen in the colony. And that is, I think, absolutely true because caging queens is, seems to me to be really effective, especially the type of cage I'm using because they have full access to the queen. She seems to be absolutely great, in perfect condition. In fact, in pristine condition by the look of it. Obviously, I can't tell physically, but she looks really good when you release her. And then when you release her, the, the effect is incredible. The strength of her laying is amazing. Perfect brood patterns, machine gun laying in many, many colonies. So I'm really pleased with it. But this just might be the supersedure that went wrong because it's a big, swarm this is that means there's 50 percent in this in the colony that's gone that's left sorry so i might well find a queen um it could be a queen that was either damaged when i put her in the cage or she died through stress or she just was old and died but then they make emergency cells in the case of a sudden disappearance of the queen but in in the supersedure um effect they generally make one or two sometimes three cells that's what we generally think because there's always this gray area between what actually is a swarm what actually is a supersedure what actually is emergency cells but we know emergency cells generally are drawn out of the brood nest somewhere in their little stubby things that go up into the nest because they've just picked a cell that's the right age as far as they're concerned we generally know that Swarm cells um, in, are mostly made in the spring and early summer when there's a huge amount of food coming in and they're, they're the biggest cells that generally hang from the bottom or the sides of the frame. And we know that su uh, supersedure cells generally are mid-frame, one or two good-sized cells, but often on a little raft of their own wax and often they're independent. They're not so much in that brood. And that's the kind of three differences you have. But... When you sometimes get this issue, I believe it's from a, 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 a problem where the queen died or they made two or three supersedure cells. Um, and, the, and if the queen died, the emergency response was made. And often they make a whole raft of queens and we're not there to cut them out because after the summer's over, you're like, well, I'll leave it till I harvest. You know, there's no big deal. And this is sometimes what you get. I mean, it's a massive swarm. So the challenge is now to get this built up for the winter. First, I've got to get in the box, but I don't think they're going anywhere. There's nothing out there, see, for them now. I often find this with swarms later in the year. There's nothing out there, really, that interests them to move off quickly because there's no areas with better nectar. There's no nothing nothing that is going to be really advertising. So I'll, I'll just knock that into a big box. I've got one spare box here, luckily, that is actually a dead out. So it's completely full of frames. I'll remove any old frames. I'll check there's no old brood in that box and we'll get it in and then within an hour I'll, I'll go and move it to a new place in the apiary give it a massive amount of feed and i don't think they'll go anywhere because this is late very late for a swarm but there's no reason why it won't build up well but a bit of fun um or uh, funny this part of this apiary this is that place i've told you about before it's like an old dump here and now i've got a key and it's locked i very it's very secure and i've got to come back and cut all this up because obviously grass grows and it's been cut three times already this year but i'm coming back to give this all a big trim and a cut but this is what it is right now because i've, I've ignored it because i've had to do other stuff you haven't got time to keep cleaning your apiaries all the time so i'm coming back later but but it's secure here no one bothers this place at all 
and I often find a swarm in this part of the air, of the area. They're almost like they wait here for you because they know that you're going to be coming back. I don't know, but uh, it is what it is. We better get this into a hive and give it some feed. But you know, you see we're busy. We've got feeders, we've got beer scapes, got a bit of honey in that super there. It's to go back. I've got some frames I pulled out hives that are really clean. New brood frames, they're going to go into my nukes where I've got partitions and when the colony starts laying early, I take out the other partition and make it to six frames now. But I'm using that as a resource. So those are those frames over there, they're good frames. I just don't believe in melting them down, it's pointless. So these are good clean frames. Majority are really nice brood frames. They've got a little bit of pollen, I don't want to waste that and they'll rebuild what they need. But it's all about using your resources. I can use some of these frames in that hive if the hive I'm going to put underneath that swarm isn't really good. I'll get it really well, give them every chance I can because the clock is ticking for these guys now and they've got to build that, build that colony up really quickly. But they're a swarm, so I'm going to come and vape this apiary in two days anyway because I'm just releasing queens now. And when I vape it, I'll get all the mites. So they're going to go into the winter really clean because they've done the thing that I was trying to do with a lot of my colonies, that's force a brood break. But now I'm going to take advantage of that. And when, hopefully if I get these in a box, which I can't see being a major problem, I'll then give them a vape. So all a bit of fun. So I found a frame of partial brood that's nearly hatched. So you've got bees hatching there. There's a little bit of nectar in this, which is just what this swarm is going to be looking for because they're going to be desperate for food. So there's a bit of nectar. I'll pop this in the middle of the colony there and I'll shake the bees in. That is a big swarm of bees. Whenever you shake a swarm into a box, you'll always get these bees that will go back up to where they were before because they can smell where the queen was and it's their natural instinct. But you can see where they build a bit of wax. I think they've been here two or three days. Bit of wax there. So that's the sign that they were just holding on. This swarm could have gone anywhere. But I was just gonna say that when you do shake, always make sure you're careful. If the queen did fall this side, it doesn't matter. She'll make her way back in, but give her that time to make her way in. Because the bees are going to walk in through the front pretty easily. And I like to cover it to give them a secure place. But then the queen will then, if she's not in there already, she'll make her way up and they'll start fanning. And they'll encourage the others in pretty shortly. And we've all done swarms loads and loads of times, but this is just my little take on it. That you just have to be a little bit prudent about what you do. If you can, I could have spent more time there cutting it away and getting it all in the box at once, that's fine. But I'm gonna be doing this apiary first. They've got plenty of time to filter their way in, to sort their way out, you know. So I'll come back in a little while, they'll all be in there and I'll put a, move it into the apiary, put a feeder on. They won't go anywhere tonight and they've got a little bit of honey on that frame now that's just there. So fingers crossed, all will be pretty good. Nice bees as well. Makes me wonder where which colony this was from. So I've got about 18 colonies in there, so I haven't got a clue where this is from, but I'm sure I'll find out. And I might never find out because there may not be a single swarm cell there. There might just be one cell that was a super seeder cell that they took off with that queen. But we'll soon find out because I might find a colony that I didn't cage the queen in 
that has brood and a few cells. So it could be anything. It could be anything this time of year. So I'm going to go and get on and put these beer scapes and we'll come back in 20 minutes, half an hour. So I've been backwards and forwards from the truck a couple of times coming past here and a whole another swarm collected on that branch I've just cut off and I shook that in. But now they are finally fanning and, all, and um, attracting the others in. It seems to be calming down a bit. But I think there is multiple virgins in this colony. And that's why there's nothing very specific. And it often happens this time of year. You know, it's unlikely to be a prime swarm. It's more one of those funny ones that goes off and there's no real reason. See so yeah, they're all kind of not really fanning, but they are. There's nothing that exciting going on there, but there's the whole box of bees. So they're all in there. But it's like there's an extra swarm on the front here. Anyway, I'm just gonna leave it for now and get on. There's too much to do. You can lose too much time messing around with swarms. That's the problem with bees. So here we are back again. There's no activity there at all. They're all in the box on that side, but we have a little breakaway swarm here, which is kind of a nothing really, but if I had a mini plus with me, when I come back and pull this honey, I can shake that into a mini plus tomorrow morning. Maybe tomorrow evening when I come, but it might well be gone by then. But there's evidence there's a virgin here. I haven't seen her, but I shook that into the box three times to check it wasn't the queen that's in there. There, in that box, are pretty settled. But the ones here, they're all over the place. So I think that's what we've got here. We've got multiple virgins. I haven't found that colony yet. I'm still going through them, but it is what it is. I'm just going to leave them in the apron tonight with a big feeder full of syrup and see what they do. I only hope for the best. Got a couple of colonies here that are both low on stores. I mean, when I mean low, I mean really low, but sometimes when I came to cage the queens a little while ago, this one was like, okay, but may have changed its queen as well. And this one, for example, died out. So I had a completely ready-made box here. As, as you know, I've changed some frames and also like to give them a bit of security. So I'll put this, this, the, uh, this is the anti-hornet door with a 5.5 mil access for the bees so the hornets couldn't get in but this year we don't have any seem to have any hornets around which is brilliant but when you have a swarm i personally find that they love that they love that security because it helps take away rubber bees and you see imagine i've got all this syrup on top even though you can't smell it as a bee we don't think they can smell this type it's still advantageous to have it sealed so only the bees can get to it from this colony so on goes my aluminium and then a, a cover board and then the roof goes on obviously we're back down to single story now which makes everything so much easier you know now there's some weight on there now the other thing is don't leave a bucket in the apron even if it's empty because the bees will just go all over it and get stuck to it i found that I, I i lost a bucket the other week i was thinking i'm sure i had one more bucket than i did have and i went back in the apron and i found it 
and it had about a third of syrup left in it. And unfortunately it was full with more than a third of dead bees because I'd been filling up at the back of the apiary where you can't see things very well. So that's another exciting afternoon in the world of bees in Brittany. I uh, hope you enjoy that bit of interest. Having a late swarm is always a bit of fun. It always comes at the wrong time, but I had a box to use it. We gave it a chance to settle. This little swarm, if it's still there tomorrow, I'll collect that. So today what I've done to recap is just put on these last bee escapes and released more queens. Not all the colonies had caged queens, I couldn't find them, but I would say 80% are. And the way I think about it is if you imagine you've got 80% of your colonies that will really respond really well to one dose of oxalic acid, when I give them the other two, I know they'll be mite free. So at the end of the day, that's got to be a lot better than thinking, oh, is it going to work? Is the treatment going to work? You know, so I know that it will work really well for the majority of colonies. I know it's a lot of work. I know a lot of people can't get their head around that and they'd rather just stick Amitraz in and I'm halfway there. Don't get me wrong. I used Amitraz last year and the year before, but I have to really look back at my previous year's beekeeping. And even though I wasn't professional, oxalic acid I found was the most effective. I had the least winter losses the springs after. So onwards and upwards. Speak to you soon. Take care. Bye for now.